Welcome to our introductory course on the basics of electricity. I'm Joe Scacera. The topics in the course to be discussed are voltage, amperage, ohms, watts, the differences between AC and DC electricity, what is power factor, harmonics, ohm's law, single and three phase power. Voltage is the energy within your electrical system waiting to be used. It's how you measure the amount of electricity that is present within an electrical circuit. Uh, let's explain. The utility sends electrical energy or voltage uh, to your home. It then goes through a meter and that's how the utility company measures the amount of electricity that you're using in your home. And then it enters into your house into your main panel. Voltage, energy, or potential, and they all mean the same thing, is waiting to be used through the wiring in your home and it connects to the plugs in all the different areas in your, in your home. This next slide shows us a picture of what electricity looks like and you, and you can't see electricity. This is how we uh, get an illustration on what, what electricity is doing. This is called a voltage sine wave. And let's look at the uh, picture there and you'll see there's two black lines and one's vertical, one's horizontal. And where they intersect, you'll see zero volts. Let's start on the red line and, and start climbing up the red line and you'll see that heads up to right around 120 volts positive. And then it starts to head on down. Uh, it crosses over the zero volts line, heads down into the negative part of the cycle where it says 120 volts negative and then back up again to zero. Uh, that is a sine wave. That's an AC sine wave. In the, in the US we use a 60 cycle system so that happens 60 times in a second. In Europe and other countries they use 50 cycle systems so it happens 50 times a second. Let's talk about amps. Uh, what is an ampere? Amperes is the measure of the amount of electrical charge flowing in an elect electrical circuit to an electrical apparatus. Amperes, or current, it only flows when an electrical apparatus is drawing from it, such as turning on a light fixture. Here's the uh, demonstration we had before, and we're going to take this a little bit further. The utility company sends electrical energy voltage to the house through the meter to the panel, the voltage, energy, or potential, which all mean the same thing, is waiting to be used. Now once an appliance is plugged into the receptacle, the appliance becomes energized when turned on. The amperage, the unit, measuring the flow of electrons, begins to flow. Next we talk about ohms. Ohm or resistance is the force which opposes the flow of electricity. Here's an example. The larger the size of wire, the less resistance. There is more area for the electrons to flow, resulting in less resistance. I have an example of two wires here I'm going to show you. I have a small wire and a big wire. The smaller wire uh, can only handle uh, 20 amps. That's uh, by design, meaning uh, anything over 20 amps, this wire is going to have a problem. And the problem is it has higher resistance. This bigger wire can handle somewhere around 200 amps, has much less resistance than this smaller wire. That's why more amps can flow through this one. Let's talk about wattage. What is a watt? Watt uh, is power. A watt is determined by multiplying voltage uh, by the amperage. It is the way to measure power consumed. A watt is a unit of energy or power, uh, like a joule or a horsepower. One horsepower is equal to 746 watts of power or energy. Uh, here's some mathematic examples of, of how we come up with watts. In the first one you see uh, 120 volts, and that's our known voltage, our voltage within our, within our home, times uh, the amperage uh, that we know that the appliance is running at. So you take 120 volts, times the 10 amps and you get 1,200 watts. You can invert that equation if your watts is known at 1,200 and you have your known voltage at 120 volts, you just divide and now you come up with 10 amps. What is the difference between AC and DC electricity? Electricity flows in two ways, either in alternating current, AC, or in direct current, DC. The word electricity 
comes from the fact that current is nothing more than electrons moving along a conductor, like a wire, that have been harnessed for energy. The difference between AC and DC has to do with the direction in which the electrons flow. In DC, the electrons flow steadily in a single direction or forward. In AC, electrons keep switching directions, sometimes going forward, sometimes going backwards. The power that comes from the wall outlets is AC. AC electrical distribution systems can easily allow changes in voltage using transformers. This gives AC electrical distribution systems a great advantage compared to DC. By using transformers, AC power can be changed up to very high voltages for transmission and then changed down again to safer voltages for consumers to use. The voltage of AC can be easily changed while it's difficult to do so in DC. Uh, what are the advantages between AC and DC? Um, Edison's original system was DC. It required many power generating stations because the voltage uh, couldn't be stepped up or down like AC. This is why Westinghouse's AC system lasted in the long run. Sometimes uh, high voltage DC is used for transmission, but it requires special equipment at both ends. Semiconductor electronics require low voltage DC, so your electronic devices have power supplies that change the high voltage AC to low voltage DC. A battery used to store electricity can only store and deliver DC. This is why the basic electrical system used in vehicles is DC. Next, let's talk about power factor. In layman's terms, uh, it is a measurement of how efficiently the end user is using the power being delivered to the customer. Apparent power is the measurement of the voltage and the current in an inductive or capacitive circuit, which are then multiplied together to obtain the apparent power. This is the power supplied to the circuit by the utility, but is not the power consumed by the user or circuit, which is true power. True power is the measurement of the power consumed by the user. The utility supplies power to a facility. The facility uses most of that power to run the facility. Some of that power is wasted due to inefficiencies. The utility power at the meter is considered to be 100% of the apparent power supplied or at a value of 1.0. In a facility's electrical distribution system, a load with a low power factor draws more current than a similar load with a high power factor. Low power factor creates the need for larger equipment and wire to handle the higher currents. Electrical utilities will usually charge a higher cost to industrial commercial customers where there is a low power factor. Utilizing all of the power from the utility would return a power factor of 1.0 or 100%, which is unrealistic. 0.91 or higher is considered a good power factor. Below 0.91 is considered a low power factor and generally will be given a penalty by the utility company. Let's talk about harmonics. Harmonics are electric voltages and currents that appear on the electric power system as a result of certain kinds of electric loads. Examples of electric equipment that can cause harmonic problems are electronic ballast for light fixtures, variable frequency drives for motors, and computer power supplies. The presence of harmonics in your electrical system, it distorts the AC voltage waveform from a simple sinusoidal to a complex waveform. Sinusoidal wave is a smooth waveform. Uh, harmonic distortion can be generated by a load and fed back into the electrical distribution system causing power problems to other equipment on the circuit. Uh, let's look at this example here. Uh, this is a good sine wave, and you can see how smooth that is, and, and th the word we use for that is sinusoidal. Nice and smooth, there's no choppiness to it at all. Here, in this example, this is a distorted wave sign. Notice the difference. Uh, look how distorted that waveform is, and, and that's not a good thing. That's what, that's what we call distortions uh, in the electrical system. Uh, some of the effects of harmonics uh, are overheating of phase conductors uh, and neutral conductors. Overheating of electrical loads uh, like motors and transformers, etc. Over voltage conditions for sensitive electronic devices. 
over current conditions of the neutral conductors, dangerous voltages and current potentials on the grounding system. One major footnote. Most electrical components are engineered to eliminate harmonics and are no longer a major problem. Here's some equations uh, that we use in the electrical industry. Uh, this first one is Ohm's Law. And what I'd like to show you there, if you look at the pie chart, you'll see E, which represents volts, I, which represents current, and R, which represents resistance. And if you look at the mathematical equations below it, you can see how they all relate to each other. If you want to find current, current equals E divided by R, volts divided by resistance. Again, invert that to the next equation. If you want to find resistance, resistance equals E, which is volts, divided by I, which is current. If you want to find your voltage, which is E, that's equal to I times R, current times resistance. Next, uh, we're looking at uh, the power wheel, which is uh, basically uh, Ohm's law, but uh, taken a little bit further. And let's look, look inside of the power wheel on the inside, and you'll see W, which is watts, and we talked about that. To the right, you'll see I, which is current. Bottom left is E, which is volts. Bottom right is R, which is resistance or ohms. Let's go up to the left-hand uh, part of the pie there, and you'll see watts. Let's look at that first equation on the left there. You'll see E times I, which is voltage times current, that equals watts. Let's go to the right-hand side, and you'll see current or amps. And let's take one equation over there. You'll see watts divided by volts equals current. Go down to the left-hand side and you'll see E for volts. And let's look at the equation on the left-hand bottom there, which is watts divided by I, which is current, equals volts. And on the right-hand side, you'll see E, which is volts, divided by I, which is current, which gives you resistance. They're all related together mathematically. Now let's talk about how electricity is distributed to your house. Uh, let's start at the power plant, and that's where electricity is generated. Electricity is then transferred long distances at high voltages, and when we work with high voltages, we now have lower amperages. The transformer uh, on the pole steps it down to a lower voltage uh, to a single phase system. It enters your house through your electric meter and into your panel box. Let's, uh, let's talk about a single phase system. Single phase uh, systems consist of three wires. Two of the wires are energized at 120 volts each. One wire is a neutral which completes a circuit to ground. How electricity is distributed to commercial and industrial buildings. Again, a power plant generates electricity. Electricity is transferred through high voltage lines with low amps. It enters your facility usually through an oil transformer and these are very big transformers very large the oil is used to cool the transformer that steps the voltage down to a more manageable and safer voltage and again remember it raises the amps since the voltage goes down electricity is then sent to the electrical distribution or switch gear in your building now let's talk about three phase electric power it is the most common method used by electric power distribution grids worldwide to distribute the power. It is also used to power large motors and other large loads. A three-phase system is generally more economical than others because it uses less conductive material or smaller wires to transmit electric power. In a three-phase system, there are three circuit conductors carrying three alternating currents of the same frequency which reach their instantaneous peak values at different times. Three-phase three electric power consists of an A phase, a B phase, and a C phase. Those are all three current carrying conductors. Sometimes in a three-phase system you have a neutral, sometimes you don't, and there's always a mechanical ground. Now let's look at uh, three-phase electric power, and what you see here is a sine wave, uh, something we saw this earlier in the uh, demonstration, but now we're going to look at it for three-phase. And the first one you see there is the A phase the black line. We also call that L1. Now let's bring in phase 2. L2 or B phase 
and you see the red line. It's about a third off of the A line. Now let's bring in the C line. It's blue, C or L3, and that's your third phase. Notice the delay between the phases. This delay between phases has the effect of giving constant power transfer over each cycle of the current and also makes it possible to produce a rotating magnetic field in an electric motor. This concludes our overview of basic electricity.